Hello world, it's Almond Milk again, and I have returned with another challenge video for this Pico Gym workout series. In this video, we're going to be doing Mind Your P's and Q's. It's in the cryptography category, and it's worth 20 points. Let's get started. In RSA, a small E value can be problematic, but what about an N? Can you decrypt this? And it gives us a values file, so why don't we just go ahead and grab that, save that. And we'll put this in. R. Pico Gym folder, new folder. Find your P's and Q's. All right. All right, let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, RSA is an asymmetric encryption algorithm, which means you use a key to encrypt and a separate key to decrypt, some sort of ciphertext, right? So C, N, and E are common values that are used in RSA, and typically with these CTF challenges, they'll give us different values, and we have to essentially figure out what the values are what they represent and then find potentially other values. There's different RSA algorithms you can use. We just have to figure out the right one to use or just figure out how to solve it based off of the basic way to solve RSA, right? So C is most likely our ciphertext. N is the result of when you start the RSA algorithm with encrypting, you have a P and a Q, which are two prime numbers and they're multiplied together and you get this N value, right? And then you, E would be our encryption key. And that's the most vulnerable part of this because it's so small comparatively. Like a lot of times the encryption key is going to be much larger than that. But since this is a basic challenge, this shouldn't be too difficult. So why don't we go ahead and go ahead and we'll go ahead and just, let's just go ahead and Google RSA algorithm, oh. and we go here, we can see how it works, and maybe we can figure out how we can decode our RSA ciphertext, right, if we know the algorithm. So we select two large prime numbers, in this case it'll be P and Q, but they use X and Y, then we calculate N, right, they give us N, so we need, and then they calculate the totient function of N, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1. And then you select an integer E, and E we already have. You calculate D. D would be the decryption key, right? And they give us a formula for, for that as well. And then the overall, right, our decryption algorithm, once we have all the values we need, right? Because D is what we want, right? We have the other values. We have C and N, right? Because C is our ciphertext, and N is our, you know, our kind of like our modulus operator, right? Our, our operand, I should say. And... D is what we need to decode the key. And then this is the expression used to actually encrypt our ciphertext originally, right? You have the plain text, which is raised to the E power, which is our encryption key, right? And then you mod by N again as well. So let's see if we can't code this out in maybe some Python. So let's do a new, well, let's just, Okay, open up Visual Studio Code, and what we'll do is we'll do a new file. Our YouTube folder here, where we made our MindPQs, and we'll call this, we'll just call this dc.py. Uh, I forgot to select a, all right. So save. Okay, so we'll drag this over here. So let's go ahead and grab all this. Okay, now that we have all those in one place, we can start kind of cracking our code. So We'll, let's take a look at the first step. So we need to basically derive P and Q, which is these X and Y. And that's how we got, you get this N value, right? 
because we need x and y in order to calculate this totient, right? And we need the totient so that we can calculate d down here in step five. All right, so there's a cool little site we can go to. It's called FactorDB. And it basically stores a database of all basically factored numbers, right? We want to retrieve two prime factors that are multiplied together to make this number, right? So if we can factorize that out, okay, cool. So it's already got our, uh, the two values we need. So we'll take, we'll grab this first. We'll grab this first value. And we'll make about we'll make a p variable set it equal to that and then we'll grab the second value and we'll make a q variable set it equal to that all right so that should be our p and q values right and i probably should have gone ahead and just put these down here and then just made little equal signs all right, now we should be good to go for the next step. So now we need to calculate the totient, which we'll represent by a T. And that's basically just P minus one times Q minus one, right? Okay, cool. Uh, we already have E. So now we need to calculate D such that E times D is equal to one mod the totient of N. Now, E times D equals 1 mod, we'll just call it T. Uh, that is the equivalent of saying, well, you, you want to isolate the D variable, right? Basic algebra, right? If we divide by the left side by E, we also have to divide the right side by E, right? To get rid of the E on the left side. So that will give us D equals 1 mod T over E, which is the same thing as saying E to the negative 1 mod t okay very good so we can definitely do that very easily in python using the pal function okay so we can do d equals e negative one and what that's going to do is do e to the negative one and if we add a third parameter into the pal function and i actually forgot to put pal there we go if we add a third parameter, like I was saying, to the pal function that actually modulos, right? That modulos it. So we can just do mod t there because that's going to give us our d value. So now that we have d, we should be able to just decode our ciphertext, which is c up here, right? So what we can do is we can do, as it says here, we can use the same pal function we used before, right? So let's do P for plain text, okay? P equals pal, and then we take our C, and then raise it to the D power, and then mod it by the totient. Oh, sorry, mod it by N. And that should give us our plain text but it'll show up as a decimal. But I'll show you what we can do after that. But let's make sure our current code works. This is a Python file. Okay, so it does look like we got a decimal value back, which is good. So now what we can do is we want to make it a hex, right? Because if we convert this to hex, we should be able to convert it to ASCII and that gives us our plain text flag, essentially, in theory. So let's run it again. Okay, so now we have our hexadecimal string here. And what we can do is we want to get rid of the first two characters. And we can do that by slicing, right? So if we just take boom, and then I believe we can just do that actually and that should get rid of our 0x yes it does so now we just have a string that we need to convert 
So what we can do here is we can do dot decode and then we can decode it as ASCII. And that should, oh, we do have an error. String object has no attribute decode. Oh, okay, I know what we need to do. I forgot. So we, we're using Python 3, right? So we actually have to do this thing called byte array. And we have to do from hex because we used to be able to do it like I just did in Python 2, but we cannot do that anymore. So if we just do it like this, there we go. And there's our flag. So we could enter this in, but I want to show you one more nifty tool we can use. It's called RSA CTF tool. And I actually have it loaded up in here in Linux already. Here, I'll go ahead and just run the tool. And you see how you have different flags here, right? And basically, we can literally just put in our n and our e values and our, our cipher that they gave us. And it, or it'll try to perform all these different RSA algorithms or cracks with the values that we give it, right? If you have P and Q, it may even work faster, but we shouldn't need P and Q because I think it'll solve it without those values. So why don't we go ahead and try it out just so you can see this is just a much quicker way of doing this, right? See how I coded a whole, you know, script to do this, you know, to do the algorithm. I, I wanted to do that to show you how to solve it, right? But now that you you know you get the gist of how the algorithm works what we can do is just use something that has been developed by probably a very smart individual and we can use it to solve the challenge much faster all right so let's Run it. All right, there's our flag again. So it doesn't matter if I put it in on Windows or Linux, but we'll just take that and we'll paste it in here. Oops, I grabbed the wrong flag. There we go. And if we submit the flag, we get 20 points. So I hope you we're able to kind of understand how the RSA algorithm worked. I get, I, I know it's a bit confusing, but there should be more challenges related to asymmetric encryption algorithms later on in the series or in the challenges. And we'll be able to go through this over and over again so that you can kind of get a feel for how this really works. Uh, this was a great starter challenge for learning that you can be given a very, you know, weak keys or weak values that are used for encrypting and some kind of plain text, right? And that they can be broken if they're not more, if they're not complex enough or long enough, right? If the keys are not long enough, then it has the potential of being broken. You know, even if your system's not fast, it's still a feasible amount of time to crack the code essentially. So I hope you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.